Good afternoon to everybody. My name is uh, Panos Alexopoulos and I am Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Psychogeriatrics at the University of Patras. I would like to thank the Hellenic Initiative Against Alzheimer's Disease for giving us the opportunity to present today an ongoing research project of our group. The talk will be delivered by Elisa Georgiou. Elisa is a resident of psychiatry at the Department of Psychiatry of the University Hospital of, Sa of Patras. She will talk about cognitive impairment and depressive symptoms in older users of municipal home care services in Western Greece, mobility, geospatial features, and access to psychogeriatric services. Elisa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen to see the slides now. Okay, uh, as uh, Dr. Alexopoulos said, we will talk about uh, this project that goes by the code name GeoCode. Uh, this would be an interactive presentation, so please feel free to join us uh, by scanning the QR code uh, that, that you can see in your screen or by going at slido.com and inserting the hired uh, code. Um, later on, you, you will see that we will have some quizzes and also you can give us your feedback and some questions uh, yeah, that you might have. Uh, before we start with our project, we want to state some of, some uh, facts that uh, we gathered from other uh, publications. For example, uh, what we can see here is that uh, in the age group of 50 to 15 and, and from 70 to 79, the prevalence of uh, dementia is 10%, uh, which will, I want to, you to remember that number because we will uh, see that later on. And in the age group that uh, we, uh, we, we want to, to see, uh, the prevalence of depression is 18%. Now going to our project. Uh, first, we want to say that this project was run, run uh, was conducted by the JAHE, the Joint Action for Health Equity in Europe, and more specifically uh, under the package eight, working package eight, which focuses in improving access to health and social services for those left behind. The project ran in the sixth health region of Greece. You can see the, uh, uh, that region in this map in the red color. Uh, it's in the Western axis of Greece and uh, inside of this health region, it's Peloponnesus, Ionian Islands, Epirus and Western Greece. The study participants uh, to, to the study that we ran was the municipal uh, home care services users. Uh, basically we, uh, we had the help of the Help at Home program, uh, which aims at elderly people who are not full self-sufficient, people with mobility impairments or special problems, minorities that live alone, and people with very low income. Uh, the, the main goal of this program is to ensure that uh, they have the required services to improve their quality of life. So the aims of the project, first of all, was to offer an extra care for vulnerable older adults in remote areas of the sixth health region of Greece. Uh, the second one was to familiarize and train the municipal home care service staff in assessing cognitive and depressive symptoms by using some uh, instruments that we are going to talk about later on. The third goal was to identify and visualize the mobility patterns uh, that the vulnerable, vulnerable older adults uh, use to seek a neuropsychiatric care. And uh, of course, the fourth goal was to design an optimized network of cooperating primary healthcare services and tertiary, secondary outpatient psychogeriatric units. Uh, the phases that our study had was five. So the first step was to educate the help at home personnel in utilizing basic neurocognitive and depression instruments, more specifically the mini mental state examination, the clock drawing test and the GDS. 
uh, geriatric depression scale. Uh, the second step was to collect the data that uh, uh, the health platform provided us, process them and provide them with a medical information node that had uh, with or without a suggestion for further examination uh, for their neurocognitive uh, um, deficits or depressive symptoms. <laughs> The third step was to trace uh, the detailed data concerning whether the elderly visit the physician or not, what kind of physician they visited, what was the distance they covered, and all of that. With all this data, we were able to create an interactive map, uh, understand and understand some of the mobility patterns that the elder, elderly used uh, for seeking neuropsychiatric care. <laughs> And of course, the fourth step is uh, to determine which, which health centers uh, could become members of an optimal network cooperating uh, primary healthcare units and psychogeriatric units. The timeline of the project, and this, is, this will be important to understand the shortcomings that we had later on. Uh, we established the program and we educated uh, the help at home personnel at October of 2020. We firstly start to, to examine the beneficiaries across the sixth health region in the February of 2021. And uh, the end of, the, of those examinations was in June of 2021. Um, and what we did uh, six months later uh, was to, to trace uh, how the beneficiaries moved. How, did they go to a doctor? Uh, did they visit a physician? Uh, and all of that. As you can see here, most of the part of the of the program was run uh, uh, during the coronavirus crisis in 2021. So this this will be one of the shortcomings that we will talk about later on. <laughs> So the data that we collected, as we said, was the mini mental state examination, uh, the clock drawing test. You can see here some of the tests of the people that we examined, uh, the geriatric depression scale with the 15 items, uh, the demographics and the comor comorbid comorbidities of every beneficiary that we examined, and of course, the geographical coordinates of both beneficiaries and doctors in order to later on create the interactive map. <laughs> Uh, some of the demographics, uh, we were able to examine 457 beneficiaries, from which from them 70% uh, were women. Uh, the mean age of them was 80 years old, uh, with a range of 40 to 97. The average comor comor comorbidities were 3.7, and the education, which is really important to, uh, to focus on, was only 3.9 years, ranging from 0 to 22. So the, it, the education level was really low. Uh, also, what was interesting was that the main occupation of our, uh, of our beneficiaries was farmers, with more, uh, almost 6 out of 10 people being farmers. <laughs> So the first step that we wanted to analyze was the participation across the municipalities. Here we, I am going to give you a small headache because we have uh, some uh, uh, different things. What we did first was to, to assess uh, the municipalities using the calocratic uh, system, uh, the boarding system, which has huge um, municipalities. So we had some results, but we, we weren't able to, to examine how, how this project helped the people in the small villages, in the small towns of every, of every county. So what we did was to go back in time and uh, go back to the Capodistrian municipality uh, system, boarding system and uh, examine the people, uh, examine how many people were examined, see how many people were examined, uh, per every small village or town, uh, not to be so chaotic. Here we have a map uh, that uh, visualizes the data that we uh, we gathered. For uh, basically, what you can see here uh, with this color, the red and yellow, uh, the red and uh, white color, you can see the regions where uh, one to ten people 
uh, per 10,000 population were examined. With the orange one, you can see the, the municipalities where 10 to 100 people were examined. And with the red color, you can see the champions of, the, of this project where uh, we were able to examine more than 100 people per 10,000 population. And those were Parapotamos in Igumanitsa, Fitias in Agrinio, and Bufrada in Messini. The next step was to assess the cognitive deficits and depressive symptoms. Beginning with the cognitive uh, deficits, uh, what we saw, we, we said that we used the mini mental scale examination as well as the clock drawing test, but here we are going to focus on the mini mental uh, to, to understand the, uh, the diagnosis of neurocognitive disorder uh, deficits or not. So the problem that we faced, as we said, the education level was really low. So a lot of the people we were we examined were analphabetic. And also there were some people that had visual deficits. Uh, as you might know, uh, the Minimental uh, has some, some questions that uh, require uh, the, uh, some subtraction, spelling, uh, or coping uh, schemes. So what we did was to adapt our mini mentals uh, to every person in order not to be biased and not to have false positives uh, examination uh, in our groups. So in the educated without sensory deficits part, we did not remove any items of the, of the mini mental uh, examination. In the analphabetic uh, group, what we did was to remove the subtraction part, the spelling, uh, the sentence writing, and the read and follow command. And in the visual deficits group, we removed the copying of the scheme, the sentence writing, and the read and follow command. So when uh, we did that, in the educated, because we didn't remove anything, the total score was out of 30. And by using the O'Brien and all uh, uh, study that you can see here, uh, we, uh, we said we used the cutoff score of 26, which provided the optimal, it was the optimal cutoff score, uh, providing the best sensitivity specificity in detecting, in detecting dementia. So what we did was to use that as a gold standard and uh, practically understand that uh, what we will do is to to use uh, the cutoff score out of out of 100 uh, out of 100 percent uh, lower than 86 percent so going on to the analphabetic group uh, the, to the total score uh, after the removals of the examination we stated was uh, 22 using the my, the 86 percent uh, cutoff, uh, we, we saw that the cutoff was 19, and the visual deficit, the total score was out of 27, and the cutoff uh, was 23. So now we are going to, to go to the first uh, question in the poll. Uh, our question here to you is, what are the percentage, percentage of cognitive deficits among, among almost 400 older beneficiaries? of the municipal home care services in the 60 health region were. Uh, as a reminder, we, uh, we, saw, we said that um, people with score of, in the minimental lower than 86% uh, represent some cognitive deficit. So goes in that group. Uh, you can uh, join us and uh, answer to your questions, if you will. Okay, I'll give you some seconds. Okay, so we have uh, some of the uh, some of the answers. Okay, uh, the the most of your present uh, said that we had this uh, forty percent. Uh, even though the actual uh, percentage of people that had cognitive deficits were 6%, so 6 out of 10 older adults, vulnerable older adults, uh, experienced some neurocognitive deficits. 
Here you can see a bar chart uh, that shows uh, the municipalities and uh, the total uh, score. And in the, the place that I want you to focus on was uh, the Xiromero. Uh, in Xiromero, 92% of the people were experiencing um, uh, neurocognitive deficits, a huge number, as well as Agrinio with 89%. I, we want to focus now uh, the, to that uh, in Etelocarnia, uh, Agrino and Xeromero are both in Etelocarnia. And they, what it's, uh, it's the fact is that they don't have any neurocognitive, uh, um, any psychogeriatric unit to, to be examined and to, to get help for these, uh, these deficits. So that's, that's something that uh, about Xeromero, we will uh, go back to that. So uh, the next, going uh, next to the, to the poll uh, phase, we wanted to ask you about the depressive symptoms. As we said, we used the GDS scale. Um, the score that the cutoff score was at five. So, um, Using that kind of score, anyone with uh, a five and above, uh, we, we uh, put them in category with the people that had depressive symptoms. So what what we are asking you now is, what do you think the percentage of the people uh, that we examined experienced uh, depressive symptoms with a GDS score from five and above, or a history of uh, depressive symptoms uh, before? The examination. Okay, I see that we have some votes. Okay, you got it on that right. Uh, we have some more. 53.8% uh, uh, of the people that we examined were having some new uh, depressive symptoms. Um, uh, th which was interesting because one in two people uh, that we examined. Uh, in the remote areas of Greece, we're having uh, the depressive symptoms that we were talking uh, that we were talking about. Here you can see a bit of a chaotic slide because we have a lot of data. But what we want you to focus on is in the GDS uh, score 12 to 15 and the pre-existing depressions. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, we have 88 percent of the people scored uh, a GDS score 12 to 15, which indicates a severe depression. Uh, all the cuts, uh, parenthesis, all the cuts, the, the cut of scores of the GDS was from the, uh, the study that we have down below. And also uh, the, the, the people that had a pre-existing history of depression were 4%. So in 12% of the people that we examined, uh, we saw that they had clinically significant depressive symptoms. Okay, here we have a chart. And what I want you to focus on, uh, in the blue, you can see the, the people that we examined that were, were healthy, we didn't have any depressive symptoms, their GDS score was lower than five, and they didn't have a history of depression. In on the other, all the other colors indicate uh, the presence of uh, GDS higher than five and the history of uh, pre-existing depression. As you can see, we have drawn a line in the 50% mark uh, indicating uh, that a lot of regions like Agrinio, Pineos, Monembasia, uh, all of them had more than 50% of their people suffering with depressive symptoms. So that was uh, something that uh, really uh, was interesting uh, to us. Okay, so moving to the next part of our timeline uh, was the seeking of neuropsychiatric care uh, six months after recommendation. Uh, here we have a pyramid that we will uh, state some of the numbers of the beneficiaries that we examined. We totally examined 457 beneficiaries, from which uh, 358 uh, experienced some neurocognitive uh, deficits or depressive symptoms. So to them, we made a recommendation for a further examination 
from a neurologist or a psychiatrist. <laughs> we were able to retrieve the data with the help of the help at home um, uh, personnel from 334 beneficiaries. So uh, before we say the, the number that actually visit the physician, uh, 358 people had uh, a suggestion to visit a, neuro, uh, a psychiatrist or a neurologist. Mm -hmm. And to our biggest surprise, only 123 people actually visited physicians uh, to, to address their, uh, their symptoms, their depressive symptoms, their neurocognitive deficits, even though they had uh, that suggestion that indicates so. Uh, here again, a chaotic uh, slide, but uh, I want you to focus in Xiromero. As we said before, uh, I will focus on that. The percentage of people that visited physicians in the Xiromero uh, uh, area was less than 25%. And I wanted to remind you that uh, the people from Xiromero were actually having uh, a 92% of neurocognitive deficits and also a 46% of depressive symptoms. And it's important to state again that in Etelokarnania, there is not a psychodriatric unit that could ban that could help to other people that suffer to in these remote areas. Areas. Okay. Here you can see a pie chart that shows the 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 way that they moved. Uh, as we said, two thirds of the people actually did not visit the doctor, even though they had the suggestion. 22% uh, of them uh, visited a special doctor, uh, a neurologist or a psychiatrist. 12% uh, of the people actually visited general physicians or the nearby health centers. And 3% of the people visited other kind of doctors as cardiologists or rheumatologists that uh, prescribe the antidepressants or adenoic drugs. <laughs> Moving on to the geospatial mobility patterns and attributes. We had all the data and we want to visualize them. What we did was to use the GIS. The GIS, Geographical Information System, uh, is a tool that uh, practically creates an interactive map that give us the possibility to visualize several options in three ways, by having dots and uh, changing the shape, the color, and the border of every dot. Here you can see the map, uh, the map of our map, we will analyze it a bit. Uh, what we did was to use the shape of every dot to represent the distance they cover to visit the physician, uh, the color to indicate the doctor speciality they visited, and the border, the, the way that they transport it to their uh, physician. So here we have the memo and some of the, of the examples. Here we can see a red circle with a black border, which means that the, the person did not visit the doctor. Uh, and the reason why they didn't was the, their inability to move due to, to health problems or financial difficulty to, to actually go there. The second uh, example, we see here a yellow square in which that indicates that they visited a, a general a physician uh, that located less than 10 kilometers from their house. And the, the purple border means that they, they went there by using their private cars. Here we have a white triangle, which means that they uh, visited a, a medical doctor that uh, wasn't uh, special or a, a general practitioner. Uh, they covered uh, 10 to 50 kilometers and with the blue border means that they used public transportation to do so. And finally, we have the uh, the green rhombus, uh, which means that they visited the psychiatrist or a neurologist. Uh, they covered more than 50 kilometers to go there. And with the yellow border means that they use the taxi to go there. So what we can see here is actually a chaotic uh, uh, map 
uh, because of the the nature of the map, uh, it's interact map. So what uh, what's good with it? It's you zoom in and you can see all the data. But here we wanted to to have the total picture of of the map that we created, and to indicate uh, some of the things. Uh, first of all, the red crosses represent the the doctors that actually the beneficiaries have visited. And all the other dots represent the people that we examined. What we can see is the 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 movement that they did, the way that uh, the they might prefer to go to Athens or the uh, central uh, to, to more central uh, places in University Hospital of Ioanni or in the Hospital of Pyrrhus. Uh, that what that's something that you can see here in this map. Uh, just I mean just and uh, that. So. Uh, moving on, we we wanted to, deter, to to identify the determinants of visiting a physician or not. Uh, we were able to do so with the help of the uh, the Department of uh, Computer Engineering uh, and the Professor Costa Ciclas. Here we have the pre preliminary graphical representation of the correlation between findings. But what we want to focus on uh, on this presentation, because this is something that uh, runs now and we don't have all the results yet, is the positive correlation of the, of the possibility of uh, every participant to go to a doctor. So what helped them actually to visit a physician? Uh, those were the income per inhabitant. So in places that the income uh, was higher, the possibility of them to, to actually visit the doctor was also higher. And also the GPD per capita, their economic output uh, of every region. And also what also uh, played a role to the, the Correl positive correlation on visiting a physician was the neurologic, neurological disorders, including dementia, uh, representing basically that they were also already familiar with the, the visit to a neurologist. So when we gave them the information note that suggested that they had a neurocognitive deficits, it was easier for them to actually visit the doctor. <laughs> On the other side, uh, the negative correlation, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, parts that uh, played a role was the age, which means that the older the person was, the lower the possibility of them to visit a physician were. And also something that we, also, uh, we, we uh, saw was that the area per square kilometer play the role, uh, which means that the low population density actually uh, was uh, uh, correlated negatively to, the, uh, to the, the probability of the person to visit actually a physician. <laughs> so going to the next step, uh, the next step of this program is to answer two questions. The first one was, is could our findings contribute to an optimized network collaborating primary health centers and tertiary secondary psychiatric units? And the second one is, uh, could computer engineering uh, reveal patterns that will provide us the opportunity to optimize the vulnerable elders' access to psychiatric care? As you can see here, I have a, a, a GIF that uh, shows all the data that we collected. It. Um, and we have all the com comorbidities, uh, the uh, stuff from the Eurostat uh, platform that uh, represent their their cost of life, their their distance from the the special centers, etc. So what we are going to do is to create a software in, to identify any any patterns that could help us uh, optimize the access to vulnerable adults under at least uh, to psychogeriatric care. <laughs> so to sum it up, uh, we wanted to focus on the shortcomings. Uh, of course, as you might see, the small sample of users assessed was one of the shortcomings of this project, as well as the low proportion of municipal home care service users assessed. 
Uh, also, uh, as you might remember from the first map that we saw, we had a, a big imbalance in the geographical distribution of the participants. In some places, we had uh, people that uh, we, we had uh, regions that we examined more than 100 people and uh, others that we didn't examine at all. And of course, uh, the COVID, COVID, COVID pandemic crisis, uh, the project ran in 2021 and uh, inside uh, the crisis uh, of the COVID. So that played a crucial role, even though the study was not restrict restricted either to confinement periods or to periods during which outpatient units didn't operate. <laughs> so to sum it up, uh, we were able to examine 457 vulnerable older adults in remote areas of the sixth health region of Greece. <laughs> from whose 60% uh, 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 suffered from neurocognitive deficits and 54% uh, had some depressive symptoms. <laughs> we made 358 suggestions to them to visit, it, uh, uh, to visit uh, a physician for further examination and only 123 actually visited physicians. And also we were able to uh, visualize interactively the data that we collected. The next step of this project is to identificate uh, determinants of mobility patterns, and of course, create an optimal network of primary health centers and psychiatric units. Uh, I want to, th to say thank you to Panagia uh, Tselexopoulos and Savina Propiado for their coastal help, uh, Apostle of Vatarakis and Bruno Maria, and there are the Mariana from the GIS team for her patience and for hard work, Bolillaro uh, for the coordination, the computer engineering and informatics team with oh. Costa Sichlas, uh, Vasilios Domopoulos and Christos Kostatopoulos, the sixth health region with Kiriaki Premtu, Afrodisia Doropoulou, and of course, all the participants from the Help at Home uh, initiative that uh, provided us all this data. <laughs> you can give us any of your feedback by using the, uh, the QR code, I will uh, leave it open. And thank you very much for your uh, for your attention. Many thanks, Elisa, for this very interesting uh, talk. I would also like to express my gratitude to the staff of the Help at Home uh, services, because without their support, uh, it would be impossible to conduct such a study. So many thanks to them also. Uh, are there any questions? So, Elisa, I would like to, to begin with, uh, with a question. Uh, you have mentioned the difficulties uh, you uh, have faced with regard to the visual uh, mm. impairment of uh, the participants. Mm. Uh, what about uh, hearing deficits of, uh, of the users of, uh, these, of the Help at Home uh, services? Mm -hmm. That was something that actually impressed, uh, impressed us uh, because uh, we didn't have uh, people that had a total hearing loss. They, we didn't have uh, uh, beneficiaries that uh, actually did not hear at all. Uh, we might have some people that have some hearing def deficits, but not something that uh, could, uh, would stop them from doing the test. Uh, I think the reason why is probably they couldn't uh, um, do the examinations, uh, the minimental examination and the GDS uh, were some examinations that need to, to, to have the hearing uh, part to understand the, the examiner. So that's one reason that we think that uh, we didn't have a group of those people. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Yes, can I ask something? I think it was, I think it's a great project, very interesting. So uh, maybe maybe you already mentioned it, Elisa, and I missed it. Uh, what was the proportion of coverage? In other words, 
you know, from those people in these areas who receive home care, uh, who receive help at home. I mean, what proportion was actually included? And I mean, in terms of how representative it is, uh, uh, do you have a sense and whether there were regional variations or some other factors there? Uh, that was something that uh, we were talking about uh, actually today. It's uh, something that we want to understand how many people uh, per, uh, per region that are covered from the Help at Home pre- initiative uh, we were able to examine. So we were in the, uh, we were, uh, in contact with the sixth health region in order to identify how many people actually there were in this program uh, to find the the proportion of of, of who it's uh, we understand we examined uh, how many we examined so yeah that that would be one of the next steps and we will use it in the uh, analysis later on uh, to understand why we had a small proportion. <clears throat> Of people that participated in this uh, in this group, in this group study. Right, right. So, but how does it actually work? You let's say you go to a to a village. I don't know, Fitias, not a village, it's a mm-hmm. small town. So you have a list of the people of people who are served by help at home, and then you select from this list. How how does it? Uh, that, that's what I missed actually. How do you mm-hmm. select? Yeah. Uh, what we did wasn't uh, we didn't go to the villages. We actually uh, educated the people from uh, the help at home and they went to the houses of the of every participant of the study, of every beneficiary. So what, what they did was to, they collected the data, they did the minimental, the clock drawing and the GDS. They provided us uh, the, the results. We made the results. We had the um this possibility and they get, we gave them an information note so we were actually uh, very uh, we needed the help of the help at home so uh, that's why we might didn't have the the uh, the proportion that we wanted because uh, some people were able to examine a lot of uh, of beneficiaries and others did not it was something that was uh, a bit fluid. It wasn't something uh, that we could do by uh, using the program and say that we will examine it, uh, 100 people from there and uh, all of that. It was in the basically from with the help of the of those of the, the people from that help at home. I, see. I don't know. So sometimes okay. some of them were more willing and they administer the scale to okay. most people yeah, yeah, and exactly. some of them. Uh, just didn't uh, participate so actively and didn't really do it for, I see. Exactly, exactly. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, I see. And, and the ultimate target is just to, uh, to to identify better the needs for these people? Yeah, the needs and also to, to work on uh, finding the health centers that could uh, benefit if we would, if we could, educate them and train them to provide psychogeriatric care by creating an optimized network with the psychogeriatric units that we already have. Uh, we, could, uh, we could provide them with the care and uh, the support uh, to, uh, to identify earlier the neurocognitive uh, deficits and the depressive symptoms and also support them during the uh, the phases of the of their disease so mm-hmm. that's what we wanted to do uh, i don't know if uh, dr Alexopoulos wants to okay so so the psychogeriatric training will happen to primary care physicians at the centers of health locally the the, the aim nikos is to identify uh, the primary health centers uh, from which, uh, which could uh, improve uh, the services, the psychogeriatric services to vulnerable people of remote areas. Because there are many primary healthcare centers in these uh, remote areas, the question is which could uh, be the best places for offering, for providing such uh, services so that uh, the needs of uh, older of older adults living in remote uh, areas are, are better met. 
Right. I, that, I don't under, what I don't understand very well is the link between uh, the needs and the identifications of the appropriate services. So, I mean, we know that there are needs all over, right? I mean, uh, most likely there will not be any particular regions within the Western part where there will be no needs, right? So if there are a lot of needs in FITIAS, let's say, to take it as an example, uh, maybe you will choose something that is closer to FITIAS or uh, I, I don't understand how, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. The, the central aim of the project is to identify, to detect the determinants of the mobility patterns, which are the criteria or which, uh, why do, do individuals seeking psychogeriatric care move in such a direction, into such a direction? Okay, okay. Why they go, for instance, from a small village near to Ioannina, not to Ioannina, but to Amphilochia. What are the determinants? Uh, financial uh, status, geographical mor morpho uh, morphology, population density. Okay, okay, I see. So based on this preference and, uh, you know, reality of transportation, you may be able to pick some version. I see, I see. So you are thinking of, of uh, physically deliverable uh, ger uh, geriatric and psychiatric services, not uh, online, right? Online, okay. uh, there will be an online support for the physicians, for the general practitioners working at the primary healthcare centers in remote areas. Okay, okay, okay great. Thank you, thank you. Are there any further questions? I just wanted to say it's a really a great project. I think it has a lot of potential. It's challenging because it's not very easy to implement, but there are so many aspects that could be developed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elisa, you, tr you, have, you tried uh, to draw our attention to this small village, uh, or to, to Xiromero, to, the, Xiromero, yeah. uh, to this uh, area of Etelo Akarnania. Mm -hmm. And uh, you underscored that uh, what, we, what we have noticed is that uh, this area has very high prevalences of, mm. uh, of depressive symptoms and of uh, neurocognitive uh, uh, and of cognitive deficits, right? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. there was, and most of the most of the it was there, and most of the users of the home care uh, of the of the help at home services, they somehow they did not they did not visit mm -hmm. the doctor. Yeah. Do you have any interpretation why or an explanation? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, less than 25% of the people that we suggest them to, to visit the doctor actually went to a physician. Uh, one, we think that some of the reasons that might be it's because of the low education level. Uh, they, they, can, they cannot understand completely what means that they have a neurocognitive, uh, uh, to have a cognitive deficits or depressive symptoms. And uh, that's something that we saw in the, uh, the questionnaires that they, uh, they answered after uh, the, um, in the second phase and the follow-up phase, that they uh, were not interested in it. Uh, also, they were scared of the pandemic. That was something that also played a role, but not as crucial as uh, the fact that they couldn't uh, recognize that they have had some problems. And uh, of course, the fact that there is not nearby uh, a psychogeriatric unit that could uh, support them and guide them to the to to understand and uh, help uh, for their their deficits uh, might play across a, a role. Okay, thank you. So we have to educate people. Psychoeducation is mm -hmm. the right the right uh, term. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Are there possibly any further questions? No. No. So I would like to thank you all for your presence and for your participation. Uh, Elisa, many thanks thank you. for your talk. All the, and I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.
Ευχαριστούμε. Ευχαριστούμε. Γεια και χαρά. Thank you.